Aswan Pearl of Egypt The land of gold Due to its location below the northernmost cataract on the Nile, Aswan marks the traditional southern frontier of Egypt with rival Nubia. Throughout ancient history the Nubians competed with the Egyptian pharaohs for territory and influence as their power ebbed and waned. However, Aswan remained the natural border between them. It was a political boundary and a natural economic intersection and the city thrived as a trading post and gateway between Egypt and the rest of Africa. North of Aswan the river is navigable to the Mediterranean Sea, so overland trade routes. Caravans of elephants and camels carrying valuable goods from the south. Converged here to load their goods onto boats traveling North Egypt beyond. Aswan's location at the cataract has continued to shape its history even in modern times. During Egypt's colonial era, Aswan was a staging ground for Anglo-Egyptian forces heading south to quell unrest in Sudan. After this at the close of the 19th century, Aswan grew into a tourist destination with its warm winter weather attracting European travelers, who sought to escape the cold in their homelands. Today it is still a must-see tourist destination in Egypt, famous for beautiful scenery along the Nile and the Nubian culture that is still a strong influence in southern Egypt. Construction of the controversial High Dam in 1964, displaced nearly 100,000 Nubian people who lived along the banks of the river. Many of these people now live in and around Aswan and make a living from tourism by manufacturing and selling traditional Nubian goods for other cultural displays. Given Cairo's frenetic pace and the concentration of tourists in Luxor around its many pharaonic monuments, Aswan provides a much more relaxed experience. It is the smallest of Egypt's major touristic cities, but it also bears the distinctive mark of the more relaxed Nubian culture. Those interested in pharaonic history cannot pass up Aswan because of the impressive Philly Temple nearby. Located on an island behind the old Aswan Dam, and the famous Abu Simbel Temple several hours south along the banks of Lake Nasser. Aswan was also the source of much of the granite used in ancient construction projects and some of the quarries are open to tourists today a highlight being the unfinished obelisk. Despite all of this, the real centerpiece of Aswan is the beauty of the river and the Nubian people. Sailing on the swirling, translucent blue waters of the Nile to visit one of the island villages near the city is sure to be a highlight of any trip. A trip on Lake Nasser cruise to one of the islands near Aswan or for a short cruise on the river is an essential part of any tour in Aswan. Attractions of Aswan Unfinished Obelisk In touring all of the ruins scattered across Egypt, it is very seldom that we pause to think about the many stages of planning and labor that came before these monuments were erected. The unfinished obelisk is a rare opportunity to consider what this process might have been like and just how difficult it was to shape and carve the great stone blocks that make up Egypt's many monuments. This huge obelisk would have stood 140 feet in height, the largest even in Egypt. It was to be carved from the red Aswan granite that decorate many of Egypt's greatest monuments and for which the city is famous. This greatest of all of Egypt's monoliths, however, was never finished. At a late stage in its formation, a flaw in the rock was discovered and it was abandoned. As a result, it remains in one of Aswan's ancient quarries, fully formed and carved on three sides, but still anchored to the bedrock on the fourth. Archaeologists believe that this obelisk was intended for Karnak, but instead, it has remained in the quarry, a curious testament to the difficulties of carving in stone for the last several thousand years. Nubian Museum Opened in 1997, the Nubian Museum is a belated, but well-executed, tribute to the culture and influence of Nubia and the Nubian people on the history of Egypt. This ancient culture, every bit as old as that of ancient Egypt, existed along the banks of the Nile for millennia in the areas we call Southern Egypt and Northern Sudan today. It was nearly destroyed by the construction of the High Dam, completely submerging the ancient heartland of Nubia, and over 100,000 people to relocate. 
The museum houses a collection of artifacts from the Nubia region, which tell the story of the development of civilization in the southern Nile Valley from prehistory all the way through the Pharaonic Ages, the arrival of Christianity and Islam, and the construction of the dam in the 1960s. The plight of the Nubia people is a highly politicized issue. In the rush to develop the country in the 1950s and 60s, the Egyptian government did not provide adequate compensation or a sufficient planning to resettle the people whose livelihoods were affected by projects like the High Dam. The Nubian Museum was intended to help rectify this injustice. While that may not be possible, especially since it still makes no mention of the consequences of the dam for the Nubian people. It is very effective at telling the story of the region and providing a glimpse of the culture that continues to exist here. Reconstructions of traditional Nubian houses with artwork salvaged from areas that are now underwater are particularly striking. The museum is near the Baytamid Cemetery, which is full of small mausoleums dating from the 9th century. Some of the tombs here belong to local saints and they are decorated accordingly with flags and often visited by local people seeking blessings. The cemetery stands next to the ancient granite quarry where the unfinished obelisk is located. Aswan Botanical Garden Covering 6.8 hectares, the Aswan Botanical Garden is home to thousands of birds and many exotic plants imported from many parts of the world like Far East India and Africa. The Aswan Botanical Garden offers a beautiful and unique escape from the city. A true jam of Egyptian treasures, strolling through the garden will take you into a dream state of scenery. The entirety of the island is landscaped with rare and exotic plants that were planted there by order of Lord Horatio Kitchener, who has gifted the island in gratitude for his service as Consul General of Egypt Army under British control. Where is the Aswan Botanical Garden located? It's located on Kitchener's Island, to the west of Elephantine Island. It's one of two islands in the Nile immediately adjacent to the city center of Aswan, Egypt.